Good afternoon, greetings, and welcome to Beer Tasting with the Old Growler. This is a live beer tasting with the Old Growler, and I'm glad to have you with me <clears throat> on a Today is a Monday, Monday the 6th of July, 2020, and uh, we are here to do a beer tasting. That's what we are. And I'm the old growler, Pete LaFrance. Glad to have you on board. And let's see. Oh, boy. Why are we here? Well, <clears throat> we're here to taste some beer. That's what we're here for. But we're also here because it's 5 o'clock on a particular day, which today happens to be the 6th of uh, July. And since we are still in a relative lockdown here, we do have outdoor dining now, so I'm only going to be doing these beer tastings uh, twice, the live beer tastings, twice a week. They'll be on Mondays and Fridays. So, well, it's 5 o'clock somewhere, particularly it's 5.01 here. So for those of you who are with me, cheers. Glad to have you with me. Oh, that's a good one. Good way to start the afternoon off. Let me just run through a few things. That uh, I, the, big growl, the old growler here, uh, Pete LaFrance, has uh, been covering the malt beverage industry in particular, but the hospitality industry as well for the last 35 years. Uh, as a journalist, I've written a couple of books, Beer Basics and Cooking and Eating with Beer. And so when New York closed down back on March 15th, I didn't have anybody to go have a beer with in the afternoons. So the old growler was born. And the old growler has been hanging out for ever since the 15th. And uh, we have a great playlist called A Pandemic uh, Diary. And you can find that uh, on the channel here and take a look at some of the uh, things that we tasted over the, uh, the really locked down part of the COVID virus. But that's the reason uh, we're here, uh, because we usually are at a place called the Henry Street Ale House, which is about, oh, four or five blocks in that direction over in um, Brooklyn Heights. And we'd get together on Thursdays uh, for a beer tasting, and what we called it was meeting expectations. And what we would do is we'd pick up a uh, we would usually have a, a can or a bottle of beer. Every once in a while, a spirit dropped by. And we, uh, Jerry Scott, the bartender and bar manager, and myself and Jim Bennis, would uh, get one of these. A lot of times, uh, breweries will send me uh, beers so that uh, they can be uh, tasted at uh, the, uh, uh, that just, we just had a thunderstorm. So that is why the light flickered a little bit. Uh, beer companies will send samples. Uh, for the uh, old grower to taste. And so that's usually what we do. Sometimes I go out and buy a few uh, on trips up into New Hampshire. I pick up uh, some beers from uh, up there in Portsmouth and uh, the other areas and we, uh, we bring them down and taste them. But essentially what we do is we get together uh, there and we take a look at the label itself. What does it look like? What does it tell you about the beer? Uh, it usually has uh, the alcohol content on it. It uh, usually has some information about the beer itself. And we figure out what they're trying to sell. And then Jerry cracks it open and we sample it and we decide whether it meets expectations and gets a thumbs up or doesn't meet expectation and gets a thumbs down. Thomas, good to see you. How are things in Atlanta? I hope they're a little bit cooler than here. It was 91 degrees here, which is just the start of summer. But uh, that's why they made beer. It's for summertime. Uh, yes, I had a good fourth. was able to uh, get out of the city and go up into Putnam County. Uh, family got together, uh, just a few of us, but to have a nice little cookout. So it was a really a great time. Anyways, um, I'm glad to see uh, folks here today. And so let's get to the tasting, okay? As I say, this is what we would usually, would, we would take a look at a can, we would decide uh, what it was supposed to be, and we would see if it met expectations. Today, we have a bit of a treat. The folks at Samuel Smith, uh, actually the folks at Merchant Duvin, uh, which import 
Samuel Smith's line of beers. We've uh, tasted their uh, organic lager a little while back. I'll leave a link uh, down in the uh, information box below and uh, a little clip up there. You can just kind of click on the, the banner there and that will take you uh, to the other taste, uh, to the tasting of the Samuel Smith's um, organic uh, lager, I believe it was. Yes. Okay, today, what have we got? It's, it's, a, it's a Samuel Smith's uh, can, uh, which is, a, this is a new product that they are coming out with. Uh, this is usually in the bottle, so we've got it in the can now. So it's a, a traditional brewery. We do know that. Uh, so that's just to start with, just the name. Uh, it is a nut brown ale, which is one of their f f uh, famous beers, of which they are famous for. And it says that it is brewed at the old brewery in Tadcaster, which was established in 1758, uh, before, uh, before uh, the colonies separated. It says it's a product of the UK. And let's see what else now here. Uh, 5.0% uh, alcohol by volume. It is vegan. Okay, of uh, 14.6 fluid ounces. So it's a little bit, a little bit different. Uh, brewed by uh, Brasserie Pair, uh, Samuel Smith's Brewery, Tadcaster, England. Um, and in the USA, imported by Merchant Devance, Seattle, Washington. And then we have this uh, American Surgeon General's warning that if I'm pregnant, I shouldn't drink it. And let's see, what else does it say? That's about it. So we happen to know that it is Sam Smith's. It's a noted brewery. It's a nut brown ale. And it is, the brewery is uh, rather old. And it is 5% alcohol by volume. So... What are we expecting? Well, uh, the Nut Brown Ale, it is a traditional beer. This is uh, a, a traditional uh, a ale, a traditional ale uh, brewed in a traditional way. And so it was going to be probably uh, just about as, uh, not quite as dark as it is outside. Uh, it'll be a, a deep brown, of course. Uh, it'll probably have a nice uh, light, light brown head, a nice tall head. And... Um, it will be slightly sweet with just a little bit of hop, uh, a little bit of hops uh, in there, but there might be some interesting aromas having it being an ale. Okay. I've got my uh, trusty wine glass here. I taste all of my beers in a wine glass because if you drink it out of a regular water glass or this would could pass as a Kolsch glass, that's mainly to show off the, uh, the beauty of the beer, but you don't get too much aroma because in a lager, there's not there's a lot more aroma in an ale than there is in a lager, so we have the all of the beers that I taste will always be uh, in a wine glass, so that it levels the playing field slightly, uh, to an extent. They're not at a disadvantage. All right, let's crack this open, and. Here we have it. All right. It is. It is a deep, deep uh, copper color. Uh, certainly a nice brown. Uh, the head on that is, is really, I don't know if you, can, if you folks can see it, but it is a sandy colored head. It is uh, tightly knit, which means that there are small bubbles in there. Uh, very small. You can see the carbonation is very good. It's a clear, clean beer. Now, let's go in for nosedive. Not too much, not too much of, a, of an aroma there. A little bit, a little bit of, of biscuit type of, a ready type of, a, of an aroma. And uh, now for the first swig. Yep. That is a, that is a, a, a sweet beer. It is However, balanced a little bit by a late arriving hop uh, flavor, which clears the palate. Uh, and certainly, um, but you do have that richness. This is a, a relatively rich beer. 
uh, although it's um, ale, Peter. It's an ale. Uh, it's a very <laughs> relatively rich ale. Second swig. Yes, it is most it, most pleasant and in, in, in essential to any good fermented malt beverage. Balance is the key, and this is very very nicely balanced. Uh, you don't get the hops until the end, and then they kind of they are not so much uh, floral but kind of an herbal type of a finish. So it is a it is that is it certainly does does. Question mark comes down to, does Samuel Smith's Nut Brown Ale meet expectations? Yes, it does. In fact, uh, knowing that it's uh, Sam Smith's, it might exceed expectations just slightly. But it certainly does. It certainly meets expectations. <laughs> and this is the old growler, hoping all of your beers meet, ex ales meet expectations. Oh, that is, that's a good flavor. Now, since this is a live tasting and we don't have uh, the rest of the guys to hang out with and talk about the beer, I put together some cheat sheets. I did visit the uh, Sam Smith's website. And so they, they tell us that uh, it is a nut brown ale. The style is nut brown, alcohol uh, 5%. Best served around 55 degrees Fahrenheit, 13 degrees Celsius, which is cellar temperature and i'm afraid this is probably just a little bit as you can see uh, the, the can is sweating a little bit uh perspiring and uh so it's it's probably a little bit warm so i'm going to let that sit over there for just a bit while we talk about what the what is in the beer or what they say is is about it okay they say it is brewed with well water the original well at the old brewery sunk in 1758 is still in use the hard well water being drawn from 85 feet underground. The best barley malt, yeast, and aromatic hops fermented in stone Yorkshire squares, which are fermenters that are made out of stone and they're square and open. So uh, it, it is a unique way to ferment their beer. And it creates a relatively dry ale with rich nutty color, a palette of beech nuts, almonds, and walnuts. Okay, ingredients. Water, malted barley, yeast, cane sugar, hops, and carbon dioxide. It's interesting they include carbon dioxide on that as an ingredient rather than the result of fermentation, and that's just my observation. According to the folks that bring it into the U.S., the Merchant event, Sam Smith's Nut Brown Ale has an ABV of 5% alcohol, and original gravity, they give us a little more information, is 1.050 of which for people who brew beer would say that that would probably come out to around 5% alcohol if it attenuated all the way out, if all of the, uh, if the yeast ate as much of the sugars as possible. And it gives us an IBU here of 31, which is relatively low. And so that's what we're, that's what we're tasting here. When I noticed the, uh, the finish uh, of the, the, last, uh, the last flavors that come across, I'm not quite imaginative enough to pick up the uh, hazelnuts, though. All right. Uh, the rest, according to the Merchant Devin, uh, they give us a small history of nut brown ale. Uh, the brown ale is a specialty of north of England and a very early style of beer. It's mentioned in literature in the 16th century. Judicious amounts of dark malt give brown ales brilliant dark amber color, a deep flavor that stops short of roastiness. The taste. The walnut or hazelnut notes in the brown ale come from dark malts and from fermentation in the Yorkshire squares. Uh, no nuts are used in the recipe. Dry, medium body, the Sam Smith's ale yeast strain gives a fruity nose to the finish. Serving suggestion, Stilton cheese, grouse and roasted game hen. I have lots of grouse and roasted game hen. I've always kept them in the larder. That's one of the things I've always had. As, along with the barbecued duck, pepper steak, spicy food, paella, stir fry, teriyaki, Thai food, Chinese food, creamy chicken, and pineapple curry. Uh, pineapple curry, that, that stops me right there. Uh, I don't, uh, I've, I'm going to have to look up pineapple curry. That's, that's a kicker, boy. I'm going to have to try that. 
And it says uh, best served between uh, 50 and 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, let's go back. Let's go back and taste it again. We, you know, I might have missed something the first time around. Ah, uh, yes. Thanks for reminding me, Tom. I did see that. And uh, the Finkels, uh, the, the people uh, who um, uh, ran, ran uh, Merchant of Run, Merchant of Van, uh, were some pretty fantastic uh, folks. That was for sure. And they were, they were in on some of the importing, some of the uh, uh, first really exciting beers into the United States back in the 70s. So uh, here's to... Uh, to uh, Roseanne Finkel. Yeah. All right. Let's we'll see if we can get a little bit more of a head on that. It does pour as a, a light head. Now, cans of beer have a tendency to be more carbonated than draft beer or even bottled beer. So I'm surprised that it doesn't throw uh, or make or grow a higher head. It might be that the glass is slightly dirty. I'm not too sure. But uh, let's give it another try and go looking for those uh, walnuts and good stuff. Now that they have led my mind and then suggestion, the power of suggestion is always interesting when you do beer tastings, uh, particularly if you've got two or three people there. One person says, well, I, I taste this and, Everyone goes, oh, yes, yes, I taste that as well. Um, now I do. Now I do at the end. After the, after the hops have, have, um, have uh, flickered away, there is, in the final, when you rub your tongue across the top of your palate, top of your mouth, you can. You can taste the, the nuts uh, there, the, uh, the walnuts uh, and the hazelnut. And it does it again, as they said, it comes right from the roasting of the different roasts of the, uh, of the malt, which doesn't turn it as dark as it would be if it was a porter. Oh, it is a, it is of course, as I've mentioned before, a classic brewery, a classic beer, a classic ale. And, uh, that's uh, one of the, the small things about ales, beers. Well, yes, there is a difference. And uh, in Tudor times, I do believe if we go back to the Tudor times, uh, in England, uh, all of the, the fermented malt beverages were um, ales. They did not have hops in them. They had all kinds of other herbs uh, thrown in there, but um, they did not have hops. Hops was, was not introduced uh, and beer was not introduced into the into the uh, into England until much later. So that is one of the major uh, differences in uh, tradition. Traditional British brew brewing uh, is the ale. See, that is where ale was born, so to speak. All right. Well, I thank I thank the folks, you folks, for showing up. I thanks for the thumbs up. That those are really good. Uh, boy, I tell you. I appreciate that. And uh, if uh, for you folks that are watching this at a later date, um, I'm sorry you uh, couldn't make it, but uh, on Mondays and Fridays, that's when you can find the Old Growler live. Uh, the other days of the week are production days, and uh, they'll be presenting, uh, we'll, uh, we'll present tastings uh, from the past, also tastings uh, that we might be doing uh, during the week particularly if we go to visit, when we go to visit breweries. And this is going to be great because uh, we have finally uh, opened up a little bit in New York. We're able to, the restaurants are able to have tables outside so that we're able to uh, go out and uh, have a few beers, new beers, uh, taste some, uh, some dishes to go with it. And uh, as I say, hopefully I'll be able to go out and do some uh, videos of that. So look forward to that during the week. And also, there should be a few interviews coming up. I'm looking forward to doing some interviews. So once again, thank you for showing up. And for those of you who are new, welcome. And please subscribe and uh, click on that uh, uh, the little bell down there that will alert you to every time the old growler goes hot. So thanks very much, everyone, for showing up. I do appreciate it. Thanks a lot. 
uh, Tom, for uh, showing up. I appreciate that as well. It's good to see you all, and we'll see you again on Friday. Oh. No, I didn't see Garrett's uh, announcement. Uh, was it... Uh, uh, was it on Facebook or was it uh, um, at the, from the brewery site? Uh, I'll have to take a look at both of those uh, to see. Now, uh, what I'm doing is I'm answering uh, Tom's, uh, Peter, did you see Oliver's announcement today? Um, Instagram. Okay. Thanks very much. I'll check it. Uh, I've known Garrett for years and years, so uh, I'll be interested to see what he has to say about it. Thanks very much once again to everyone who's shown up. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Look forward to seeing you again with a tasting, with a beer tasting with the old growler. Cheers.